Welcome to part two of determining a geometric power series to represent a function. Let's start with a quick review. We know that this infinite geometric series will converge as long as the absolute value of r is less than one, and the sum is equal to a, the first term, divided by one minus r. So if we have a function and can write it in this form, we can rewrite the function as a power series. We've already done a couple examples in part one, so let's go ahead and take a look at some additional examples in this video. The first thing we notice about this function is it doesn't fit the form of a divided by one minus r. In fact, we have the variable x in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So sometimes we have to find the partial fractions that would represent this function. So let's go ahead and perform partial fraction decomposition. The first thing we need to do is factor the denominator. So we'll have x plus three, and the denominator is a difference of squares, so we'll have one minus x times one plus x. We have two linear factors, so we'll have a over one minus x plus b over one plus x. Now we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator of one minus x times one plus x. So we'll have x plus three on the left must equal a times one plus x plus b times one minus x. Remember if we multiply this fraction by one minus x times one plus x, the one minus x factors would simplify out. And on this fraction, the one plus x factors would simplify out. Now this equation is true for all values of x, so let's go ahead and let x equal the zeros of the linear factors. So we'll first let x equal negative one. So we'll have two equals, this would be zero, and this would be one minus negative one, which would give us two b. This tells us that b must equal positive one. Now let's let x equal positive one. So we'd have four must equal, this would be two a, and now this would be zero. So if two a equals four, that means a is equal to two. So now we can rewrite the function as a sum of two fractions that closely resemble the form here that we're looking for. So since a is equal to two, we'll have two over one minus x, and b is equal to one, so we'll have one over one plus x. But to make it better fit this form, I'll rewrite it as one minus negative x. Now we can rewrite each fraction as a power series. So for this first fraction, we'd have a equals two. Notice a is the numerator. And r would be positive x. For the second fraction, we'd have a equals one. And now r would be negative x. We know the absolute value of r must be less than one in order for this to converge. So for this series, we're gonna have the absolute value of x must be less than one. And for this series, we'll have the absolute value of negative x is less than one. Well, in both cases, the interval of convergence is the same. It'll, it'll be the open interval from negative one to positive one. Let's go ahead and determine our power series. In red, we would have the summation from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the power of n. Well, a is two, and r is equal to x, so we'll have x to the power of n, plus the infinite series from n equals zero to infinity when a is equal to one, and r is equal to negative x. So these two power series represent the given function centered at x equals zero. Let's go ahead and work on rewriting this as a single summation. We'll keep this the same for a minute. Let's go ahead and factor out a negative one to the nth. And now we'll go ahead and factor out x to the nth. So we'd have two plus negative one to the nth times x to the nth. 
So here's our power series for the given function centered at x equals zero. Let's go ahead and take a look at this graphically as well. In red we have the original function and then in blue we have several terms of the infinite series graph. And you can see right around x equals zero, the blue graph is a very good representation of the red graph. Let's go and take a look at another problem where we can use integration to help determine a power series for a given function. Here we have f of x equals arctangent x, and we want to have the power series centered around x equals zero. This obviously does not fit the form we're looking for in a divided by one minus r. However, the derivative of arctangent x does. The derivative of arctangent is equal to one divided by one plus x squared. So if we think about this for a minute, if f of x was equal to one over one plus x squared, we could rewrite this as one minus negative x squared. And this fits the form we're looking for, so we have a is equal to one, and r would be negative x squared. So we could represent this function as a power series where a would be one and r would be negative x squared. So we'd have the summation of negative x squared to the nth power. And we could rewrite this as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of factoring out negative one to the nth. And here we'd have x squared to the nth or x to the two nth. Now the connection we need to make to integration is if f of x is equal to one divided by one plus x squared, and we integrate that function, the antiderivative should be arctangent x plus a constant. So arctangent x must equal the antiderivative of one divided by one plus x squared plus a constant. So now we'll replace this function, one divided by one plus x squared, with the power series. And we'll integrate this with respect to x. So if we do this, we'll add one to the exponent on x and then divide by that new exponent. So we'll have the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the nth. And this will become x to the two n plus one all divided by two n plus one. And when this power series is centered at x equals zero, this constant here will also be zero. So what we've just done is find the power series for arctangent x by using integration. One more thing we didn't do is find the interval of convergence. Let's go back up to here where we had r equals negative x squared. In order for this power series to converge, the absolute value of negative x squared must be less than one, which means x must be greater than negative one and less than positive one, which is our interval of convergence. Let's go and take a look at this graphically. In red, we have y equals arctangent x, and then in blue, we have the graph of the first several terms of the power series. And we can see very clearly that the blue function is a good approximation of the red function when x is close to zero. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.